gonna go ahead and put on this blanket as a shawl. <clears throat> so look at the colors. We have the red. The red, it symbolizes cycle. But what type of cycle? Our womanly cycle. So I'm just talking about my experience pretty much with my cycle and how I um, have pretty much used my cycle in a way to channel pregnancy, to be able to figure out, almost use it as a guide to testing different ways to handle my pregnancy. So, and you might be thinking that that is a little weird coming from somebody who's not wanting to have a baby or who's currently pregnant. Well, I think that as having a womb and a healthy one at that, I should do some part in researching and understanding childbirth and making my body the most comfortable it could possibly be for that. So this is preparation. So pretty much I use my cycle as a test run. Um, when I have cramps, cramps, my body is, it is contracting which it's not contracting like you'd be contracting with a baby because it's a whole baby. I'm contracting with um, tissue, uh, some blood, your egg. Yeah, so I just, I tend to just sit there and hum through it because the vibrations, the hum in my stomach make it feel a little bit better because it's just, I'm um, letting that feeling flow. Now, whether that feeling is uncomfortable or painful, uh, you can decide that for yourself. It's technically a, it is a natural process, uh, but for it to be painful is not very, it's, it's normal in society, but for it to be super painful, I would say probably not. But if you are, like, these are still, like, exercises that you should do to prepare you for birth because this is probably going to show you what your birth is going to be like leading up to it. And you might not think that it's that important. It's just literally a couple hours. Um, not just birth, but, um, like, your whole entire birth process because even though it's a week, it's just crazy how the universe kind of preps you for something like birth or just growing a child you start to feel certain symptoms that also correlate to birth and it's just like wow and I mean I understand that what your body is doing but you people just pass it up and are just like okay it's gonna be painful it's gonna be whatever let's just get it over with and I completely understand that it might be a little inconvenient but I personally love my cycle it a little inconvenient but it, um, we've come a long way. I started from not knowing if my period was real or not, if periods were real, and um, so I was trying to get rid of it. And then I was like, everybody has one, not, not knowing, but I want to get it to a certain amount where I have a little bit just like not a lot but like a, only like a couple of days so at first it was a week but i think that your ovulation cycle is a reminder that your body is working healthy and it's good to go on a baby so the objective was to get it down to around what four four days and i've succeeded and they're light but I still have stuff like my breast get tender and swollen and obviously it's not going to be the same thing as having a whole entire child growing inside of you and your breast growing but it's a similar process your breasts are becoming engorged and they're sensitive, tender, especially since there's lots of nerve endings in there. It's just a lot going on. I'm just being there on my cycle, I... Just being there on my cycle 
and feeling what I'm feeling, whether it's pain, whether it's sadness, dot, dot, dot. I just normally feel fine, but I feel un not uncomfortable. I'm working on getting past that phase. There's gonna be different phases that you go through if you decide to take the journey to healing your cycle. Um, but you go through these different phases your, phase, your first phase might be getting down to four days, and then your next phase is going to be, uh, my cycle isn't uncomfortable, it's natural. It's getting me prepared and just saying stuff during that time. Um, so yeah, you have different phases and you should really be conscious of those phases just being a conscious woman you should if you're not conscious that's okay if you're just here to heal yourself and your womb and just understand a little bit more about your um, cycle and what it possibly could be used for instead of pain and all that other stuff that i don't associate my cycle with asking questions you do shadow work. If you do shadow work, if you know what that is, asking yourself questions about different emotions and stuff. Ask yourself why you're feeling these certain pains in your body, like how you would if you had a backache or something. So, ow, my stomach is cramping. This is, ah, is it really, does it really hurt or is it just like uncomfortable? And you get to the point when like you start actually healing yourself. If you haven't healed yourself, and healed your cycle then you're probably gonna feel different than somebody who has healed their cycle so when it comes to unhealed wounds let's start getting you healed because that's going to open up a space for you to create and create in a healthy way that's the only thing I can say. There's not a long spiel about it to create in a healthy way. Your womb is a creating center, the creative center. Create in a healthy way. Fatigue. I just really want somebody to take care of me, pretty much. <laughs> and I know that I don't really know if there's anything else I can do about that. But it's just really nice to have somebody to take care of you that can bring you tea, that can um, roll you a joint, that can make you some food, that can go and go get a heating pad or whatever else it is. So, as far as tiredness goes, I'm, I'll be in bed, but I would prefer somebody to be in bed serving me but obviously I gotta muscle up and go get the food myself when it comes to food I've just learned so far that it'll be different when I actually have a whole entire child inside of me because she he will be growing some like little sensors and taste buds and I like this certain thing and you might and you might not dot 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 so I, I'm just gonna say when it comes to food just cycle it out whatever you want it's whatever you want obviously I'm plant-based so I stick to a certain code but if you're something if you if you go by a different diet then you will be eating something different but it probably won't be the same on your cycle but when you have when you're growing a baby there's a possibility that your baby will become more attuned to a certain type of food but I don't personally know any pregnant women who have like been on this type of journey that noticed that their child was only eating I've heard of stories but they've never seen actually where they're like, I only ate like strawberries and blueberries. And then my child hated like this, like mushrooms. 
so if you are one of those mamas let me know in the comment because that would be perfect and I'd be like okay so uh, your child does take a liking to certain plant-based stuff or tell me what your child didn't like even if you're not plant-based just tell me what your child did and did not like when you were pregnant if they did have a tendency to reject something or want more of something i know some beings study like the phases the luteal phases and cycles which are true i'm starting to get into those but more so my body instead i'm feeling the phases that my body is going through so i'll know when i'm about to start my cycle because of certain things like it doesn't have to be just one specific sign there's multiple different signs and then before that i might notice that i start doing such and such during this time i haven't really noticed anything in the first two weeks before my cycle starts the first yeah the, the first two weeks but the week before and it might actually be two weeks before my cycle starts that I know what's going on or things are changing. So, yeah, but something that I would love to share are some of the teas that I use while I'm on my cycle that have helped heal my cycle tremendously. And I would not be recommending anything that I have not used before. So this is it. Here we have in the teapot. We have metal. So this helped me a lot because this has a bunch of iron and a bunch of minerals. And it was the first one that I had been introduced to that was good for blood. Replacing, not really replacing blood, but replacing certain, um, encouraging cellular growth, certain cellular growth. And this is the first one I learned about. And so this is why I'm putting this in here. Obviously I've learned about so many more herbs, but I'm going with my OGs. So that way you know that you are in good hands. I, mean, I have hibiscus, but I have no clue where that's at because it was in a really giant one, but, or in a really giant bag. And don't come for me for keeping my herbs in plastics. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> Okay, I can't get the burdock root out right now. Uh, this is supposed to be a smooth sh sh smooth sailing ship right now. And the burdock root doesn't want to come out. So, burdock root. Burdock root, I specifically use burdock root for cleansing any toxins out of my body before and after because burdock root is good for that and I want to make sure that none of those metals heavy metals or whatever in any of the food or anything that I might have consumed that was not exactly the most plant-based friendly which isn't anything like super duper way out there like I don't eat meals like that sometimes I might eat something that just I don't know, it's just not, like a piece of something is just not the best for me and not the best ingredient. So burdock root is gonna help so I don't have to endure some of those icky feelings from those icky toxins or icky foreign radicals. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Oh, oh. Okay. Okay, burdock root, toxin cleanser, and then it also has heck of minerals. So powerful. It smells like the ground. If it smells like the ground, you know you should be consuming it. Herb drop. Okay. Okay. This is mint, but it's actually frankincense, but we're just going to say it's mint for right now. Um, <laughs> Mint is good for um, relieving cramps and it's just, I'm a type of being who likes to correlate certain herbs or like certain symptoms to certain causes. So because I drank 
this peppermint tea, I feel this way. So, but I just personally like to do it off of my experience. It just adds like this cooling effect or like ginger that's what I was thinking of like those two but like it um the peppermint adds like a cooling effect to your stomach and it it's like a ice pack a warming ice pack we've got red raspberry leaf which is um, good for balancing hormones and it's just good for it has a bunch of minerals and vitamins in there but these vitamins and minerals equal hormone balance so anybody can tell you that there are a bunch of vitamins and minerals in them which there are and some of them have more than others and some of them have some very different compounds but they all have vitamins and minerals but they all have different um uses some of them have the same uses that I am sipping on over here. Mm. I mean, made with hibiscus flowers. So now to just end this off, I'm going to play a little tune for you and see if it resonates to your frequency. <laughs> okay. I'm going to be using amethyst, rose quartz, <laughs> black tourmaline, copper, tiger's eye, and smoky quartz to amplify this signal to you and give you a blessed day especially if you made it through this whole entire video and you actually picked up some information and you loved it and that makes me happy so time I decide to bless you with my presence this uh, the next time you decide to bless me with your presence and um, it was just great to be able to sit down and talk and hopefully you learned something from this from my own experience and hopefully you start taking a the journey to healing your womb space and understanding your cycle a little bit more and how instead of being a hindrance it can be something actually helpful so embrace that blood embrace those uncomfortable moments embrace that womb space inviting in new life embrace it all love it all cherish it all because because you need to you just need to if i'm i don't feel called to tell you reason why you should but just if you feel called then you will 
so i will talk to you guys all later i hope you have a wonderful year i hope you have a wonderful gregorian calendar year so